across legs. Place your hands to your knees. Close the eyes if you wish. Take a deep breath in and exhale slowly. I want you to take the fleshy part of your butt away from you. I'm going to sit for a while in cross legs. So if you really are uncomfortable sitting in cross legs and you prefer to have your legs out or a little bit further away from you, then do that. But we're just going to stay here and I want you to play around with um, sitting up straight. So you might find that you're slightly leaning forward. You might find that you're overly slouching like so. So coming out of the sitting bones and just playing with that place where you can feel yourself sitting up straight, looking straight ahead, perhaps having your eyes closed if you wish. Just noticing when you move back slightly, whether your core engages a little bit more in order to stabilize you. As I say, if you're overly leaning forward, maybe you can feel it in the lower back too much. And if that is the case, just move back slightly so that you have to get that core activated in order to hold you stable. You're gonna breathe in. And as you breathe out, I want you to suck your belly all the way in as far as you can. So you're really sucking the belly in and drawing up under the rib cage. And just hold it there for a moment and then relax. So you're gonna inhale. And as you exhale, you're gonna suck your belly in. Pull it in as far as you can. and then relax. So do that again, inhale, and then as you exhale, suck your belly in, pull it right away, and you want to feel as if your belly's coming right the way in, trying to get it underneath the rib cage. Hold it there for a moment, and then relax. Let's just take the fingertips forward and round the back over, tucking the chin, just feel a gentle stretch over the whole of the back of your neck. And we'll stay here for a moment. Coming all the way back up to seated and we'll cross the legs in the other way around. Rotating to one side. And then turn to face the back. And then we'll turn to face the front. So keeping your body rotated, just turning the neck. So to turn one way and the other with your neck. And then we'll turn to the other side, rotating the body and then turn to face the back with your head and the front. And we'll turn to face the back and the front. And then come back to centre. Cross your legs the other way round. And this time I rotate just to face our knee. And we're going to come forward and round nose towards knee. So your forehead might get down towards your knee. Your knee, nose might get there. You might be somewhere up here and that's okay. So we're rounding to get to our knee. Breathe deeply. And 
and I'm sitting up. Let's cross the legs the other way around. Rotate to find the other knee and round down, nose towards knee. And then coming all the way up to seated into your side stretch. So we're going to make this a movement in our side stretch, leaning forward, trailing your fingers in front of you and then coming up to a side stretch on the other side. Let's keep moving. So keep breathing as you do this. If you want to make it very mindful, really touching your fingertips, feeling that sensation and following your fingertips with your gaze. Last one. And then take the fingertips behind you. Keeping your fingertips on the floor and cupping your hands, squeeze the shoulder blades together. You're extending through your chest, little tiny back bend. So you're squeezing your shoulder blades as far together. And you're gonna lift your chin and lean backwards slightly. Take a deep breath. And then we'll come back to center onto your hands and knees. Let's rock backwards and forwards. Let's tuck myself back in. <coughs> Riding up. So keep rocking backwards and forwards. You come far back as is comfortable so it doesn't have to be uh, energetic it can be slow and just noticing how that feels for me back on your knees <clears throat> i'm going to take the knees out wide and the toes together and do the same rocking backwards and forwards And then knees together and ankles out. And again, go slow on this, especially if you've got very tight in your hips, it might not be as comfortable. And if that is the case, then just have your knees below your hips <clears throat> and your ankles in line and just continue to walk back and forth in that way. Come back up onto your hands and knees. And we're going to cup our hands now. So you're on your fingertips like so. So your hands are like little claws. Imagine you're holding onto two cakes. That's how I like to think about it anyway. Two little cakes beneath my fingers. You're pushing down on your fingertips. So some of you might find that really quite achy for your fingertips. So don't stay there for a long time. And then we're going to come off and press the hands to the to the mat. So really spread your fingers and push your hands down, pushing through your wrists and your elbows. We'll come up and we'll load our fingertips again. So we're pushing down. 
So what we're doing is tendon loading. Pressing it down again, flat on the palms, as flat as you can, pushing through the palms. When you tend to load, you tend to uh, just give uh, it more tolerance. So if anybody is new to this and really not liking their wrist aching, it's just a case of little and often placing some weight through your hands and your fingers. And the more you do, the easier it becomes. And up again onto your fingertips. And then back onto your hands. But this time we're going to press our palms in and we're going to scrunch our fingers up. So it's like you're pulling your fingers back to you in a kind of claw feeling. And then you're pushing through the palms. So you're clawing your fingers, but you're pushing through the knuckles of your hands. So clawing the fingers and the knuckles are coming down. And then flatten out all the hands, pushing through the whole of the hands, and we'll rotate the palms. So the thumb is coming out, and the wrist is coming towards the top of your mat. Stay here for a moment. And then we'll move one hand and rest. And the other hand and rest. And we'll come back to a seated position. Taking your fingers now <clears throat> and touching your fingertips in terms. And then shake it out. And then squeeze into a ball as tight as you can. And we're fast fingers now. So you're spreading your hands as much as you can and then clenching into a fist. And you're doing that as fast as you can Remembering to really spread them out and really crunch up. Keep going as fast as you can. Oh, I hate doing this. After a while, it starts to get a bit achy. Oh, keep going, keep going, faster. And then pat all your arms because you're going to have full pools of blood. <clears throat> pat your arms. We're lifting our fingers up into the air. And just wiggle the fingers. And then come back again into our touching fingers. So I was talking about this to someone this week about uh, dementia. Um, and this was also recommended by uh, their physiotherapist as well. Uh, it was something I was taught a couple of years ago now. So we're going to take the fingers doing this, still tapping our fingers, and we're going to move one finger down and one hand staying up. And then you're going to swap that, still tapping your fingers. This is where your brain goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> keep doing that then one hand's going to come out to the front and one hand down still tapping the fingers in each turn and the other side this is where I missed a finger at that point keep going back in turn tap your forefinger middle finger ring and then small finger and then back the other way out to the sides And then in an L shape, and we'll swap to the other side. And then back to our fast fingers, really fast. And then shake them out. 
and come back onto your hands and knees. So that's a little workout for your hands. And we can do that whenever we want. Coming back into extended child pose now, walking your fingers out. Your alternative is keeping the hips high and walking your fingers out in front of you so your forehead is to the mat. Or we're in an extended child pose like so. Breathe. And then if you're not already in uh, puppy pose, lift your hips from your heels and take your hands out in front into puppy pose. And then we'll come down onto our elbows into a sort of elbow kneeling plank. Notice what your belly is doing. So if it's hanging and you can feel it in your back like here, you want to lift your belly slightly so you can feel your belly pull up. Keep breathing, staying in that kneeling elbow plank. And then up onto hands and knees and into cat cow. Let's take the hands one space forward and shift the shoulders over the wrists into a kneeling plank. Try not to be so sloped forward that you're like this. You have to pick up those hips. You want to feel yourself push through your hands, push through your knees so you can feel your belly activate in our kneeling plank, kneeling straight arm plank. You're going to tuck one foot, so tuck the toe of one foot and lift the knee off. Breathe. Place that knee to the mat, tuck the other toe, lift the knee off. Breathe. And then come back again into a puppy pose or a child pose and rest the spine. Back up onto hands and knees. I'm going to figure of eight a knee. And back the other way. Take that foot wide of your wrist to the front of the mat into firefly. Pushing up from the palms and the crown of the head's coming away from you. Breathe. So you're going to tuck the toe of the back foot and just lift that knee off the foot. Make sure that you're pushing through more of the heel than using your hands and come back onto your knee. So you really want to feel the spread toes of this standing foot. So you're spreading the toes, tucking the back toes. We're going to lift up and then come back down again. Opposite hand to front leg and rotate towards the thigh. Take that top arm and we're just going to wrap it behind you. So let it drop behind you. And then take that hand back to the mat and we'll come backwards and swap to the other side. So figure of eight with the knee. <clears throat> 
What I might do, Belinda and um, Christine, is if you email me your um, address and I will put some a couple of blocks outside your front door for you and then <laughs> do your figure eight the other side. If you email me your addresses and then I can drop you some blocks and it'll make doing yoga a little bit easier for you. We'll take that foot wide of the wrist on the other side, creep it forward if it gets stuck. We're in firefly. Breathing. You're going to tuck the back toe and you're just going to lift that knee off the mat. And take that knee down. So you're just going to lift that knee off and put the knee down. Take the opposite hand to the wrist and rotate towards the thigh. Breathe. This top arm is now going to drop behind you. Take the top arm back up, hands to the mat. Take the back knee back onto the mat and into your cat cow, arching the back. Inhale and extend, and then we'll arch into cat. Inhale and extend. Arch into cat. Inhale and extend. Do a few more of those and then rest back into a child pose or a puppy pose like so. <clears throat> and rest. back up onto hands and knee and we'll take the left foot through the middle of the hands this time and come up onto the thigh lifting both arms if you can into a crescent moon or you can always have an arm resting to your side to support you or a chair beside you if you wish And then we'll take the arms back to shoulder height and we'll bring ourselves backwards on that knee. So we're straightening the back leg. So the back leg's now straight. Got to really push down through the back knee. And then we'll come forward very slowly and lift up into crescent moon. So don't overly hang off of this hip. You don't want to push through the front of the hip. It's just coming forward slightly. Still squeezing the bum so you're in control and then come backward, bringing the arms back down and straightening that back leg. So we're going to move forward so this knee comes over the ankle and lift the hands up. Bring the arms back down again, coming backwards, squeeze through that hip. And then we'll swap to the other side. Take the opposite hand through. Coming up onto the thigh. Bringing the arms all the way up into crescent moon or resting one arm to your thigh. Taking the hands to shoulder height and then moving backwards. Got to squeeze this butt to straighten that back leg. Breathe and then slowly coming forward, bringing the hands up. And then slowly come back again. And come up forward again, front knee is over the ankle. 
I'm going to come back again into straightening that leg. And then come down onto the mat with step back and hands and knees and into a cat cow. Stay in your cat for a moment. Really push up and arch. And then slowly dip and extend into cow and then slowly come up into cat. And then slowly, slowly back into cow. Let's come down onto our elbows, lifting our belly slightly so we have to engage. And then coming back up onto hands. So we're going to make this a strong pose. We're coming from a box position, so you're holding through your belly. That back is in a natural line, so don't let yourself dip. Make sure that you are engaging up, and then you're coming down onto your elbows. You're gonna push up onto your hands, and you're alternating which way you come up. So one time your left hand's pushing down, and your right arm's going back, and then another time your right hand's pushing you up, and your left arm is going back. So left hand pushes up, right elbow comes down, and then right hand pushes up, left elbow comes down. A few more of those. And then come onto your elbows. Clasping your hands, we draw back away from our elbows. We've got to hold our belly here to support ourselves. And we're taking the thumbs to the back of the neck. And breathe. Come all the way forward and drop down onto your belly into a sphinx pose. Elbows beneath the shoulders and just allow yourself to rest in sphinx. Toes out now, heels are in, and you're stacking your hands and looking to one way. So whichever way my fingers are pointing, that's the way I like to look. Just a little bit more comfortable on my shoulders. Make sure you're breathing deeply here so you can feel your rib cage expanding. And then we'll lift the head, stack the hands the other way and turn to face the opposite direction. Let's put the forehead to the mat and bring on ankles, knees, hips in line and take the hands out in front of you and lifting up into locust pose. We're taking our thighs off the mat, taking our chest off the mat and breathing. We take the arms behind you 
and we're going to flutter arms and legs. The so arms are beside you, we're fluttering arms and legs. Breathe, just look into the top of your mat. A few more, and then rest down onto your mat and relax. Taking the hands out in front of you again, forehead to the mat, lift this up into locust pose, taking the sides off the mat, the arms and the chest off the mat, breathe in this pose. Taking the arms behind you now, you can lift a little bit higher and then you're gonna flutter arms and flutter legs. Looking to the top of your mat, Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Should be getting a bit warm by now. Keep breathing. Keep fluttering. And then rest down. Turn the head to the other way. And relax. Taking the hands all the way by your rib cage. The option is to come up into Sphinx and just rest there for a moment. Otherwise, you're taking your elbows inwards. You're going to engage to come up and continue to push onto your thigh. You're going to breathe and stay here in our up face dog, or you're staying in your Sphinx pose on your elbows. And then place the knees to the mat. We'll come back into extended child pose or puppy pose. And take a deep breath. Coming up onto the hands and knees and tuck the toes and sit back onto your heels. Getting warm now. Sit back on our knees, tucking our heels. You can always rub your feet if you want. And then we'll come to the long side of your mat. Just move that forward. And sit back onto your heels. Your feet are flat now. If it's really uncomfortable to do that, then stay kneeling up. But we're going to stand here on our knees for a little bit. Have your hands to your thighs. Relax your shoulders. Just allow yourself to breathe and settle your breath. And then we'll come all the way up onto our hands and knees, uh, sorry, our hands and knees, onto our knees, I should say. We're going to take a leg out to the side. You're going to turn your foot to one side. And your toe should be where the top of your knee is. So you might want to bring that forward a bit. Taking a hand in front of the extended leg, we're going to lift up and over into gate pose. So if it's horrible to have your hand over your head, you can either have your hand to your hip like so, put your arm out to the side, or wherever it starts to get uncomfortable, you're gonna leave it there. So if it's too uncomfortable to have over the top, don't leave it there for a long time, just have it wherever it's comfortable, or keep moving it slightly like so, until it starts to feel comfortable. We're in our gate pose. We're going to take our hands down to the mat. We're coming down to the mat. Your thumb 
is in the line with the top of your knee and we're lifting into side plank, kneeling side plank. Staying in your kneeling side plank. We're going to thread the needle. So this top arm is going to rotate round and you're going to try and get to your shoulder to the floor or nearer the floor and then you're going to lift all the way up into a side plank. So if you're going just a little way, just rotating the body a little way and then coming back. If you're like this, then you're rotating across and coming back again. So you're lift, rotating across as if you're trying to get your fingers behind your back and coming back again. Or if you're in kneeling side plank, you're coming through the arm and then you're going to lift all the way up again. So we're going to go through the arm and lifting up again. Let's lift all the way up and come over into gate pose again. Take a breath. And then let's swap to the other side. Take a foot out to the side, line up your big toe with the front of your knee. And we'll start into gate pose. As I say, if it hurts to have that arm over the top, maybe have it up to the ceiling or out to the side or even your hand on your hip. Otherwise, you're taking the arm all the way over and it might feel comfortable just to keep moving slowly that top arm so that you can get a little bit further each time. You don't want to yank it. Remember, we've got all the rotator cuff muscles are quite delicate. I don't want to yank it over the top of our head. Breathe in your gate pose and take the top arm down towards the mat. Now, if you're not coming down towards the mat, that's okay. You can stay kneeling like this and you can rotate to the back like so. Otherwise, coming down into a kneeling side plank, top arm is towards the ceiling. And you're coming underneath your body, trying to twist to the back, thread the needle, arms coming underneath that body and then extending towards the ceiling. So you're rotating, coming underneath the body and then lifting all the way up. So don't force it, just go as far as is comfortable and then lifting up. And come under the body and lifting up. We lift over the top and come back into gate pose. Back on and come to one side. <clears throat> and place your knees in 90-90. So the front foot is on the back knee, if that makes sense. So you've got a 90-90 position. You're gonna sit back if you can. If you can't sit back, if it feels like your hips coming off the floor and pushing it down is really uncomfortable, then don't do it. But otherwise, if you can, you're gonna sit back and this front knee might pop up, but that's okay. So then you're gonna lift up again. So we're squeezing this hip. So you're gonna take it down, and we're gonna squeeze it up. Take it down, and we'll squeeze it up. Take it down, and squeeze up. Last two, down, and squeezing up. So just moving this hip onto the floor, and then lifting it off the mat, onto the floor and onto the mat. Take the opposite hand to your front knee and we'll rotate all the way around, trying to look for that back foot behind us and then coming back to center. I'm gonna lift and look all the way around for the back foot and then coming back to center. Lift all the way around and then come back to center, but we're turning to face this bent knee and leaning over the top into a modified pigeon. 
and breathe. Just allow yourself to rest and breathe evenly. And then we'll come all the way up and swivel our legs to the other side. So we're sitting in that 90-90 position. We're gonna try and sit back now. You'll notice that knee pops up quite away this side. So that's okay. Don't worry where the front knee comes up because it will adjust for you. And then you're squeezing to lift that leg up. So it's coming down and squeezing to lift your bum off the mat and then place the bum to the mat and we'll squeeze to lift off. If that's a bit uncomfortable for you Belinda just to have wherever you can get it and then just squeeze the bum rather than sort of going so much coming down to the mat you can just sort of squeeze your bum and then release it and squeeze and release it and that will feel a little bit more comfortable than trying to rock the body to steady yourself. We'll do a few more and then we're going to take the opposite hand to the front leg and we're lifting and looking all the way over behind us and coming back to the centre. So you're rotating, looking for that foot behind you and coming back to the centre. Last one, look for your foot. Come back to the centre. You're turning to face that knee and coming down onto your forearms and then resting in a modified pigeon. Let's come all the way up to seated and bring ourselves slowly down onto our mat. So hopefully you're all on quite padded floor. We're going to take our knees. If you're on a really hard floor and it's very uncomfortable on your back, then don't do this uh, or put something below you like a blanket. Otherwise, if you're on carpet, it's not too bad. So you're going to take your hands underneath your knees and you're going to rock and start to rock yourself so you have to get up to a seated position. As I say, I'm on a hard floor, it's a little bit ouchy on the spine, but not too bad. Just keep rocking until you get yourself up and you're up. Now, if you want to practice this at home, I'm not going to do the full uh, lot of this here now, but if you want to practice that at home, your goal is to rock yourself so that you end up on the other side of your mat like so. So you just make lots of little tiny rocks backwards and forwards like this until you get to here and then you go the other way round and you get backwards and then you go back the other way and that's really good for the core and something that you can practice at home in one of those oh my god it's raining outside moments which is now happening. Otherwise, we're going to come to the floor, hug the knees into our chest. So we extend one leg along the mat. Just start to settle the breath and breathe. And then we're going to come to the other side. Settle the breath and breathe. And bring the knees up into your chest. And we're extend the legs along the mat. 
Take the arms over the top of you. Bring the feet to the right hand corner of your mat and the hands to the right hand corner. You might want to hold on to a wrist. So you might want to hold on to your left wrist. So you stretch that arm over the top. Again, if it's uncomfortable, just hold your fingertips wherever it is comfortable. Doing a side bend, lying down, relaxing. Breathe deeply and exhale slowly. And then come to the other side. Again, you might want to hold the wrist or just below the wrist of your right arm. So you can feel and it's stretched down the right hand side of your body. Take a deep breath and exhale slowly. Exhale slowly. Deep breath. And exhale slowly. Bring yourself back into a straight line. Place the arms beside you, palms facing up. Take your legs a little bit wider. Lie in your savasana. You're letting your body rest down onto the mat. So now is your chance to get a pillow for your head or blanket or put on something warm. Or you can stay lying down. Put a jumper back on. I'm going to turn one of my lights off because it's a little bright in here. Yeah. <clears throat> Get yourself comfortable on your mat. Remember, you can um, bend your knees if you need to, have them bent, or you can put something underneath your knees. You're at home, use the resources that you have at home, maybe a bed pillow or just cushions off the sofa. Place a blanket over you, keep warm. And remember, you're quite welcome to stay lying down even after the class let, uh, finishes, because if you stay lying down, I just uh, end the meeting for everybody. And um, it's up to you if you want to stay there and have an extended relaxation, you are quite welcome to do that. So let's have our palms facing up. and settling our body down on the mat. And we're thinking about everything that we can feel with our body. That's the surface beneath you. Perhaps your breath entering and exiting your body. All of those sensations that you're noticing Remember, if you do have a cough and you want to sit up or have your body to the side, that's quite up to you. Have it any way you want that's comfortable for you. And we're starting to notice any sensations we might be having in the body now. Checking in with yourself. Maybe you can feel tingling in the fingers or vibrations through the body. Remembering that's your nervous system. We want to settle our nervous system. So we're going to start to say in our mind's eye to ourselves that we're okay and that we're safe as we are and we are well. And you might notice now that you start to breathe differently. Keep saying that you're safe and you're well. Perhaps you have a sigh of breath, perhaps a shudder of breath. That body starts to relax deeper. So it's about the noticing that we're doing when we settle our body, when we have that quiet time to ourselves. You might feel fidgety, unable to rest, and that's completely okay. But you're noticing that. 
And we're not judging it, we're just allowing it to be. Perhaps you need to just wriggle your fingers and toes and then start your relaxation again. And that's quite okay. Let yourself notice that. Now with your eyes softly closed, noticing your head on the mat, noticing your body sinking down onto the mat. I want you to think of a light, a glowing ball of light at your solar plexus. That's your part of your body that's just underneath your rib cage, where your diaphragm is. And I want you to feel that ball of light beneath your solar plexus. Notice its warmth. You might like to place a hand there. And I want you to visualize this ball of light, this ball of energy. Notice how you feel right now. So if you feel perhaps jittery, nervous, perhaps irritable, you might notice that that ball of energy is maybe moving fast, maybe spinning fast. If you feel completely relaxed, you might be noticing that that ball of energy is moving slower. Perhaps it's not slow moving at all. Perhaps it's just glowing. And you can notice that energy that's coming from that solar plexus region. And as I say, it might be spinning fast. It might be spinning slow. It might just feel like it's glowing. But I want you to imagine it in your mind's eye and notice what you can feel. You might like to place two hands, one on top of each other at that area of your body, as if you're holding on to that ball of energy. You're really going to use your imagination now here. You're just breathing slowly and I want you to think and imagine that you can start to slow down that ball of energy, particularly if it feels like it's moving fast. Or if that ball of energy is not moving at all, think of it as starting to glow more deeply with more energy. But that energy is starting to radiate out through the body. And as it radiates out through the body, it's got a soothing, calming feeling. So that slowing down of that energy ball is what you're trying to do, is particularly if it's moving fast. But if it isn't moving fast, try to concentrate and imagine it start to radiate its warmth and its light to your body. And as it does so, it's settling and soothing all of the body. You can feel your shoulders relaxing and your elbows down through your spine and your hips. And as this radiating warmth soothes your body, starts moving to the very fingertips and your toes, you can feel yourself starting to calm more. The 
breath is steady and even and you're thinking about this radiating heat and warmth from the solar plexus, the ball at your solar plexus, starting to ebb into all of the areas of your body now, right up through the spinal column, right up to your head. And the head is the last place you want to feel it so that it's soothing your head and you can feel all that movement in your head start to dissipate. So it starts to soothe the forehead, soothe the back of the head and feel down through the ears and the jaw relaxing, down through to the fingertips relaxing, right to the tips of your toes as if this energy is radiating to every cell in your body and as it does it relaxes and soothes with the warmth of its energy. Just allowing the breath to settle now, feeling as if your whole body is now filled with that warmth and that light. We're going to bring our attention now to making that light feel more energizing. So instead of soothing our body, we're thinking about drawing into that energy through every part of our body as if it's energizing every cell in our body. So think as you start to deep breathe now, you're going to breathe deeply down as if to your toes, getting all of that energy and light to feel more radiant, brighter and more energized because we're starting our day now. We're inhaling the breath down to all of the fingertips, all of the toes, and exhaling slowly. And each time we breathe in, thinking of ourselves more vibrant and more radiant, more energized and alive, exhaling slowly, inhaling deeply as if down to the toes, fingertips, exhale slowly and then starting to wriggle fingers, wriggle toes and then bringing yourself slowly up when you're ready to a seated position. Remember you can lay down there and stay if you want, you're quite welcome to. If you're joining me sitting up in a seated position, hands to your knees, fingers in your mudra. We take a breath down to the base of our spine and exhale slowly. Inhale down to the base of our spine and exhale slowly. Rotate the palms to heart center. Namaste. Thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.